Hello, no, very good morning. You're watching the breakfast news on Rajya Sabha Television with me, Frank Pereira. Let's take a look at the top stories this morning. Polling underway in the first phase of assembly elections in Jammu and Kashmir and Jharkhand. 15 seats in JNK and 13 Maoist hit constituencies in Jharkhand to go to polls today. Prime Minister Narendra Modi to leave for Nepal today to attend the SARC summit. Speculation still rife about a possible meeting between Modi and Nawaz Sharif. Day 2 today of the winter session of Parliament, price rise and uh, black money to be a challenge area for the government in this session amid its reforms push. Much delayed draw of lots for Delhi Development Authority's housing scheme 2014 to be held today. DDA to webcast the draw live. And despite a race against time, Iran and six world powers failed to clinch a deal on Tehran's nuclear program deadline shifted to the end of June. Well, polling got underway a short while back in 15 assembly seats in Jammu and Kashmir and 13 Naxal hit constituencies in Jharkhand. The first of five phases of assembly elections in these two states. In Jharkhand, the fate of 199 candidates will be decided in this phase. The constituencies are spread across six Maoist affected districts. Heavy security is in place for peaceful polling. In the first phase, electors will vote at 3,939 polling booths. The polling time is 7 a.m. to 3 p.m. The BJP and the Congress are expected to battle it out in the first phase in Jharkhand. The ruling Jharkhand Mukti Morcha holds no seat at present from these 13 constituencies. In Jammu and Kashmir, 123 candidates are in the fray in this phase. The 15 assembly segments going to polls in this state today are spread across seven districts of the Kashmir Valley. Kargil and Leh in the Ladakh region and Kishtwar Doda and Ramban of Jammu. Heavy security is in place. Nearly 1,900 polling stations have been set up by the election authorities in these 15 constituencies. The polling time in Jammu and Kashmir is between 8 a.m. to 4 p.m. Moving on to the other big focus of the day today, Prime Minister Narendra Modi leaves for Nepal to attend the 18th SARC summit. It will be the second opportunity for the Prime Minister to meet his South Asian counterparts. The speculation is rife on whether Modi and Park Prime Minister Nawaz Sharif will meet on the sidelines possibly today. The streets of Kathmandu getting a makeover ahead of the 18th SARC summit. A fresh coat of paint, Security being beefed up, even national holidays declared on the 25th and 26th, the days of the summit. Nepal is rolling out the red carpet to make sure that the summit is a huge success. Prime Minister, Indian Prime Minister, the cabinet, Nepal, this summit is order. Different different organizations are order We have to order the government. We order the government. We have to order the government. But once again, yet another SARC summit is threatened of being overshadowed by Indo Pak ties. South Asia's two largest countries have suspended all forms of contact after the foreign secretary level talks were cancelled back in August. This will be the first time that the Indian and Pakistani Prime Ministers will be sharing the stage since then. But whether this will lead to a bilateral meeting on the sidelines, that's a matter of intense speculation. Sark has suffered a lot in the side of conflict between India and Pakistan, the tension there, although it's a regional forum. But within the regional forum, you know, like this kind of tension or conflict between the two countries has had its um, sad on, on, on its future or its potential. Naturally, back home, that's given the opposition yet another stick to beat the government with. What is going to come out of the meeting between Prime Minister uh, Shri Narendra Modi and Prime Minister Nawaz Sharif? That is the moot question. I mean, if they want to meet to exchange some pleasantries, to eat some dhokla or to have some Lahori food, then it's a different matter, but in terms of policy, this government has no policy towards Pakistan. Prime Minister Narendra Modi was also all set to visit Janakpur, Lumbini and Muktinath. Those plans now stand cancelled, 
The official reason? Because of the Prime Minister's busy schedule. Bureau Report, Rajasabha TV. Joining me for a chat this morning on this subject is uh, Mr. Baladas Goshal, Director, Society for Indian Ocean Studies. Very good morning and thank you for joining us on the program. You. Uh, you know, let's talk about the 18th SARC Summit now. What is it that we can expect from this particular summit? I think there will be some new initiatives in mm. this particular summit because all these years, the last uh, how many years, more than two decades, there has not been much of development yes. or progress. Yes. And it is really lagging behind all other regional cooperation. If you really compare the developments in SARC with other countries, I think it's a dismal kind mm. of a performance. Mm. Mm. Uh, Inter-regional trade is only 5% of the total trade. Yes. Whereas if you look at East Asia, it is 35%. In Southeast Asia, it is 25%. Mm. In, even in Africa and Middle East, it is 12%. Yes. In, investments are also very little. Mm. Infrastructure is in a, in a dismal state in this. Connectivity is hardly anything in this. And is the least connective, I mean, least uh, sort of integrated uh, uh, part of the world. Oh, uh, and why is it so? Is it because the two biggest countries of this particular region are at loggerheads with each other? I think a number of factors really uh, contributed to this kind of development in SARC. One, of course, is the main problem between India and Pakistan mm -hmm. that has not allowed any sort of you know, initiatives to be undertaken. I mean, there are a lot of initiatives have been undertaken, but to be implemented and successful, you need the cooperation, obviously, mm -hmm. between mm -hmm. the two mm -hmm. largest countries. And I think India itself was also not that greatly interested mm -hmm. uh, initially for a number of years because it thought that maybe it's a gang uh, to sort of, you know, uh, to put the Goliath. <laughs> mm, mm, uh, uh, but I think slowly and slowly as India's economic development started taking place, I think India felt interested in the region and began to take certain initiatives. You know, several critics have called uh, the SARC uh, a talking shop that produces very little action. Now, uh, is there I, any truth in that? I think that's true of many of these things that India does. It mm. is, you know, when it comes to declaration, it's very loud. But when it comes to implementation, it's very meek. Mm. Now, I think under the Modi government, mm. at least the person himself looks very serious. And I think he wants to show that at least things are moving. And I think the standing committee in uh, Kathmandu has already identified a number of areas like agricultural productivity, mm. 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 telecommunications, uh, and then health, and a few other energy is another area. Yes. So I think some movements will take place. Mm. And at least this government is more serious about implementation. Mm. Implement uh, implementation is the key, isn't it, really? Because I, everyone expects it, everyone wants to see some action on the ground because words are just merely words and nothing else. I think that's the, that's the essence of this meeting, I believe, mm. that unless it is implemented, you know, recently the high commissioners of India and Bangladesh met in Dhaka mm. and they brought out what is known as the Dhaka Declaration. Mm. If you look at the declaration, excellent. But, you know, I was told that in that meeting, the issue that was brought about by many <laughs> is about the implementation. Yes. That was repeatedly emphasized by most of the people there. So yeah. I think if this government wants to leave any footprint, mm. and which Modi at least looks ambitious to uh, do that, there will be some action to my mind. And unless they can bring about some action in, in, in this front to bring the region together, because the potentialities are huge yes, in yes. terms of cooperation between the countries. You know, is, is this yet another SARC summit which is going to be concentrated upon uh, the two prime ministers, Nawaz Sharif and Prime Minister Modi, that is India and Pakistan, yet again? We saw the Congress spokesperson earlier in the show, you know, talking about how the moot question really is, what is the relationship bet uh, between India and Pakistan going to be? So is this going to be another summit that's going to concentrate only on these two countries? No, I don't think so. I think one of the things that Modi will do, I'm sure, although it is not certain whether they're going to meet on a bilateral level yes. or uh, some e exchange of pleasantries, yes. but my own they feeling is that... They will come face to face, but we do not know whether no, they're going I, to have any my, talks. My own feeling is that knowing the person and his... Uh, unconventional ways, mm. you know, like he almost staged a coup by bringing Obama 
yes. in 26 January celebration. Yes. So my own feeling is that Modi will do something mm. and at least a meeting will take place between the two. And of course, he will emphasize that there should be peace and stability in the front and Pakistan should not engage in any kind of aggressive uh, stance. In mm. the, uh, to what extent uh, the outcome would be, that is not certain as yet. But my own feeling is that he will take some steps. Something order, will happen. Something, something will, will happen. Wait for something sure, is what sure, you're saying. All right. Sure. Thank you so much, uh, Mr. Goshen, for joining us on the program this morning and putting things into perspective for us. So, well, moving on now, it will be day two of the winter session of parliament today, the first real day of parliamentary business after proceedings were adjourned early yesterday. There's plenty of action in store too. While the government is hoping to strictly keep the business of the House on its economic agenda, the opposition is all set to corner the government on the issues of price rise and black money. On the first day of the winter session of Parliament, the Prime Minister reached out to opposition parties. He expressed hope that they will be cooperative in ensuring smooth running of the House. <laughs> बहुत ही अच्छे काम हुए थे इस बार भी वैसा ही अनुभव रहेगा ऐसा मुझे पूरा भरोसा है the opposition parties, however, seem intent on raising other issues including price rise and black money. बहुत से मुद्दे हैं क्योंकि एक तरफ तो black money का उन्होंने वायदा किया था सौ दिन में आज तक एक पैसा भी नहीं आया बहुत से ऐसे इतने मुद्दे हैं कि हमने ये कहा स्पीकर को कि इसमें से हर मुद्दे के ऊपर कम से कम एक घंटा दो घंटे भेज सुना चाहिए हम ये भी कहना पूछना चाहेंगे कि बड़े बड़े उद्योगपतियों को आपने बिना गारंटी के स्टेट बैंक से हजारों करोड़ रुपए कैसे दिला दिए इस सरकार ने द शिव सेना सपोर्ट दो कम्स एज अ ब्रीदर फॉर द गवर्नमेंट जो भी हमारी ताकत है हम सरकार के साथ ही रहेंगे कोई हमारा भारतीय जनता पार्टी से दिल्ली में या राष्ट्रीय स्तर पर कोई हमारा मतभेद नहीं है लोकसभा स्पीकर सुमित्रा महाजन हैज अश्योर्ड ऑल पार्टीज दैट दे विल बी गिवन एनफ अपॉर्चुनिटीज टू स्पीक इन द हाउस प्रजातंत्र है लेकिन हां प्रजातंत्र में भी नियम कायदे भी चलते ही है तो चलेगा मैं विश्वास है मुझे कि अच्छे तरीके से चलेगा मेरी कोशिश तो यही रहेगी ना कि काम हो शांति से हो और सबको मौका मिले मौका देने के लिए मैं तैयार हूं द मच डिलेड इंश्योरेंस बिल सीकिंग टू अलाउ मोर फॉरेन कैपिटल इनटू द सेक्टर द गुड्स एंड सर्विसेज टैक्स बिल एंड द बिल्स सीकिंग टू रिप्लेस द कोल ऑर्डिनेंस आर टॉप मोस्ट ऑन द गवर्नमेंट्स एजेंडा इन दिस मंथ लॉन्ग विंटर सेशन विशाल दहिया राज्यसभा टीवी दिल्ली well, we slip into a short break now, but still to come, Chuck Hagel has resigned as U.S. Defense Secretary after less than two years in the top post. Hunt on for a successor. That and much more coming up. Stay tuned. We'll be right back. Welcome back. You're watching the breakfast news on Rajya Sabha television. Well, after a spate of delays and postponements, the Delhi Development Authority, DDA, is likely to hold a draw for its 2014 housing scheme today, deciding the fate of over 10 lakh applicants. The process of draw will start at 11.30 a.m. and it will be completed in less than two hours. The randomization of data in the system would begin around 9 a.m. in the morning. The DDA has also announced that the entire draw will be webcast live on the internet on a dedicated URL www.ddadrawlive.in. Previously announced dates for the draw on November 5th and then November 17th were cancelled. Nearly 25,000 flats across various categories are on offer by the DDA this time in the price range of 7 lakh rupees to 1.2 crore rupees. Well, let's take a look now at some other news making events lined up uh, for today in our special segment, The Day Ahead. Foreign ministers of Sark nations will be meeting in Kathmandu today ahead of the 18th Sark summit starting tomorrow. External Affairs Minister Shushma Swaraj is in Kathmandu for the meet. The meeting will have delegations from India, Afghanistan, Bhutan, Bangladesh, Pakistan, Sri Lanka and Nepal. 
Prime Minister Narendra Modi will address a rally in Jharkhand's Chaibasa before he leaves for Nepal. Congress Vice President Rahul Gandhi will campaign for his party in the second phase of assembly elections in Jammu and Kashmir. He will address rallies in Lolab and Poonch constituencies today. The first ever bus service between India and Nepal will be flagged off today from Delhi's Ambedkar Stadium bus terminal. Delhi Transport Corporation will run the bus service. The move comes after the cabinet approved the signing of bilateral agreement for regulation of passenger traffic between India and Nepal ahead of the SARC summit in Kathmandu. The one-way fare from Delhi to Kathmandu is likely to be 2,300 rupees. Trade ministers of India and the United States will meet in Delhi under the Trade Policy Forum meeting today. It is a platform established to iron out bumps that uh, come in the way of investments and trade between both countries. U.S. Trade Representative Michael Froman will engage with Commerce Minister Nirmala Sitaraman who will be leading the Indian delegation. Hearing in the IPL spot fixing case will continue today in the Supreme Court. The fate of IPL COO Sundar Raman and BCCI Chief Srinivasan's son-in-law Gurunath Mayappan will be the major highlight. The court will also look into the conflict of uh, interest issue arising from uh, Srinivasan being the head of the BCCI and uh, owning an IPL team whose official is found to be involved in betting. The Allahabad High Court will hear the, uh, the Surinder Kohli execution case today. Last month, the court had stayed the execution order of Kohli and sought a reply from the centre on the delay in deciding his mercy petition. Surinder Kohli is a self-confessed cannibal found guilty of murdering young women and children at a bungalow in the Thari village in Noida. Moving on to some international news now, U.S. Defense Secretary Chuck Hagel resigned from the post on Monday. The resignation comes at a time when President Barack Obama faces critical national security challenges, including fighting Islamic State in Iraq and Syria and revising plans to exit Afghanistan. Hegel was appointed less than two years ago as Obama pushed his signature program of winding up wars in Afghanistan and Iraq, a process that is being appended this year with the U.S. re-engagement in Iraq and greater military cooperation with Kabul. The former Republican senator submitted his resignation after lengthy discussions with Obama that began in October. Hegel will remain in the job until the successor is in place. Uh, this or any decision lightly, uh, this decision does not come easily to him, but I consider myself extraordinarily lucky to have had him by my side for two years, and I am grateful that Chuck has agreed to stay on until I nominate his successor. And as the President noted, I uh, have today submitted my resignation to Secretary of Defense. It's been the greatest privilege of my life, the greatest privilege of my life to lead and most important, to serve, to serve with the men and women of the Defense Department and support their families. I am immensely proud of what we've accomplished during this time. Well, the deadline for a nuclear deal with Iran has been extended to the end of June after talks in Vienna failed to reach a comprehensive agreement. The U.S. said talks had been tough, but substantial progress had been made. The parties will reconvene in December. Yes, more. No final agreement. Yet another deadline missed to resolve 12-year standoff over Tehran's atomic ambitions. The new date to conclude the Iran nuclear deal is now set for March 1, 2015. The deadline for final agreement will be 1st July. One of the main sticking points this time around was on lifting sanctions against Iran. Iran won significant sanctions lifted right away, but P5 plus 1 members say they want them to go incrementally. Uh, I wouldn't want to give any false hopes here. We're still quite a long way apart and there are some very tough and complex issues to deal with, but we're all focused. Discuter ce soir, négocier, continuer les négociations. Encore euh, des différences, oui, euh, à régler. Bon, mais c'est notre travail. À bientôt. Merci. Closely watching the talks, Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu said that no deal is better than a bad deal. Prime Minister Netanyahu was updated by Secretary Kerry. I was updated by other uh, uh, countries that participate in the talks. And we are uh, doing our best to convince not to sign a bad deal with Iran, a deal that will enable Iran to become a threshold nuclear state. It will be a third extension for Iran's nuclear program. 
the United States, Britain, France, Germany, Russia and China started the final round of talks with Iran on November 18th. The aim was to clinch a deal under which Tehran will curb its nuclear ambitions in exchange for lifting sanctions that just ended in wilderness. Pure report, Rajasipha TV. Here's a look now at some other news updates from around the globe in our world wrap. Ukraine President Petro Poroshenko has said a referendum will be held to decide whether his country should join the North Atlantic Treaty Organization. Poroshenko said that he had worked out uh, the criteria for the referendum. Countries are only admitted to, to NATO if it believes they will contribute to security and stability in the North Atlantic area. Piano that prompted Ingrid Bergman's famous Casablanca line played Sam sold at an auction on Monday in Manhattan for $2.9 million. The iconic instrument played a major role in the classic 1942 film in which it stood in the center of Rick's Cafe and was the hiding place of Humphrey Bogart's letters of transit. U.S. President Barack Obama presented the highest U.S. civilian honor, the Presidential Medal of Freedom, to 18 artists, politicians, writers, scholars and activists, including actress Meryl Streep, songwriter Stevie Wonder, writer Isabel Allen and golfer Charlie Sifford. The Presidential Medal of Freedom is reserved for individuals who have made meritorious contributions to U.S. security, world peace or cultural endeavors. On to the global stock markets now. U.S. stocks rose on Monday on hopes that China will take further accommodative monetary policy action if needed, while merger deals kept traders focused even as volumes were below average. The Dow Jones Industrial Average rose 7.84% or points, I beg your pardon, or 0.04% to end the day at 17,870. Standard & Poor's 500 gained 5.91 points or 0.29% to close the business at 2,069. Nasdaq Composite added 41.92 points or 0.89% to 4,754.89. Gold prices went up by 130 rupees or 0.56% to 26,930 per 10 grams on Monday due to increased buying by jewelers and retailers amid ongoing wedding season demand. Silver also advanced by 100 rupees or 0.64% to 36,650 per kilogram on increased offtake by industrial units and coin makers. Malaysian stocks were mixed today on concerns that China's central bank will extend the first cut in interest rates uh, since 2012. Japan's Nikkei is up by 69.64 points or 0.40% to 17,427 at the start of today's trading. Hong Kong's Hang Seng lost 36.43 points or 0.15% uh, or to 23,856 at the start of trading. It's time for another short break now, but all the sports uh, action lined up for you on the other side. Stay tuned. We'll be right back. Mac, you're watching Rajya Sabha Television. Well, the Supreme Court made scathing remarks, virtually indicating that the BCCI in the IPL betting scandal on Monday. The Apex Court told uh, uh, Indian Cricket's premier governing body that it had done little to preserve the common man's trust in the gentleman's game. The court kept its most scathing remarks for suspended BCCI President N. Srinivasan asking him to come clean on the conflict of interest and how he justified being both President and owner of the Chennai Super Kings. The court also reminded Srinivasan that he was only assuming that he was uh, given a clean chit. The Justice Mudgal report on the IPL spot-fixing scandal accused Srinivasan and other IPL officials of covering up misdeeds of an unnamed player who violated the player's code of conduct. Srinivasan's son-in-law, Gurunath Mayappan, and uh, Rajasthan Royals co-owner, Raj Kundra, have already been indicted for betting. Well, let's now take a look at some of the other news updates uh, from sports arenas across the world in our sports beat. 
After a string of disappointing results, Delhi Dynamo's football club finally registered their second victory in the ongoing Hero Indian Super League when they pipped host Northeast United FC 2-1 in a keenly contested match on Monday. The win takes the Dynamos to 7th spot in the 8-team league with 10 points from as many games. Northeast United dropped to the last position. India named an 18-member squad on Monday after selection trials at Delhi's National Stadium on November 18. Sardar Singh will lead India in the 18 Men's Champions Trophy to be played in Bhuvaneshwar from December 6 to 14. Veteran goalkeeper PR Srijesh will be Sardar's deputy. India played their first match against Germany on December 6. Over 10,000 people gathered in Lausanne's uh, Navigation Square to celebrate uh, the Davis Cup winning Swiss tennis team and especially stars Roger Federer and Stan Wawrinka as they arrived in Lausanne. This is Switzerland's first Davis Cup victory. Fresh from becoming the all-time leading goalscorer in La Liga, Lionel Messi will have his sights on more history as he looks to repeat that feat in the Champions League when Barcelona visit Apoel Nicosia today. Messi's double in the Catalan's 2-0 win at Ajax three weeks ago took him level with Real Madrid legend Raul's record tally of 71 goals in the competition. And finally, here's a marathon with a difference because this one's on hard ice in the Antarctic. I'm going to leave you with the visuals of this unique marathon. Have a nice day.